comedy. They all have a sense of right and wrong, they all have a sense of justice. By the way, monkeys have a sense of justice. If you give a monkey two bananas for the same work that you're giving another monkey, one banana, the one monkey banana will go on strike. Um, they do. They get very upset. And rightly so. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> All societies have rules against murder, rape. Um, all of them have hierarchies. All of them have status. All of them consider it an offense to violate those things. All of them have obligation. All of them require individuals to uh, do certain duties or pay taxes or in some ways contribute to the group. All societies uh, require defense of the group and all societies require child rearing, some form of marriage that involves child rearing. And if you look at these across the board, it becomes very clear what they are. These are rules that allow human beings to live in groups. And they're really nothing more than that. If, if you have a society in which murder is acceptable, you literally can't go to sleep at night. And there are societies in which murder gets out of hand, and in those societies people end up hiring private guards. It's a very expensive way to live. Um, and once you do that, and you look around and you look at animals that live in groups, and insects that live in groups, you realize they have the exact same rules. They don't talk about them as much as we do. But, or at least we don't know that they talk about them as much as we do. Um, except for Dr. Doolittle, who might know, but I, but I certainly don't. But they have the exact same rules. At, animals that live in groups have rules against murder. They have rules about sexual access. They have rules about child rearing. They have rules about duty to the group. They have... Uh, punishment for people who violate those rules. They have status and hierarchies and they require people to live within them. Um, and they have group identities. Uh, and so you look at that and you say, well, if that's going on, then you, then you realize that the species that preceded us lived in groups. And so we come into existence <coughs> with a blueprint for morality built in. And it, it is, and again, it is, there's a category distinction here that comes into play in all these philosophical conversations and it is between that we do things and how we do things. A society may work itself out that um, marriage is defined as between one man and one woman, or between one man and however many women is convenient, or between one man and four women. Um, very few societies have worked itself out where it's, but there have been a few where it's one woman and a, multi, uh, a multiple number of men. But that we have those relationships is built in. Now, one of the things that happens in an evolutionary process, along with evolution, is a principle of economy, which is that um, once something works and you move on to the next level, because consciousness is very expensive, you can't see um, the, the, the new creature is incapable of really being conscious of what's going on from what it picked up in the previous or five previous or a thousand previous species. Just it, We are, for example, completely incapable of sensing in any way whatsoever what our cells, our individual cells are doing. We cannot sense one cell dispensing oxygen, picking up CO2, traveling here, 
going there. We cannot sense the deals that cells make with each other to coexist. We cannot sense how most of our organs are functioning except when they malfunction. We cannot sense how we process our thoughts. Okay, most of them are unconscious. The processing of them, both on the physical level and even on the mental level, is as unconscious to us as we are unconscious of what our computer is doing behind that screen. I cannot, there is no way I can, when I'm typing there, I can see, I know what my finger's doing, I know the letters show up on the screen, I don't have a clue what the process is, and that is our relationship to ourselves. So, we come in, we have this compulsion to have rules that will allow us to live in groups, we are incapable of figuring out where the hell that's coming from. Because, and, it's, and sometimes it's very annoying because it's in conflict with our individual needs. And we're so constructed to try to balance the two. <clears throat> so it feels like it's coming from somewhere else, and it is. It's coming from 178 species back, or 10,000 species back. I have no idea when group living was invented. And our fallback position for anything we don't understand is God. Okay? So, religion has always taken um, ownership of morality. Um, okay. So, that's as much dry, heavy things as I want to talk about. Um, what I think I want to do is... If, is opening up this up to Q and A's. Um, if anybody wants to ask me anything or wants me to talk about anything in particular, I will be happy to do that. Um, and I can talk about movie stuff if you like movie stuff. Uh, I can talk about Wag the Dog if you're interested in Wag the Dog, or I can go on with more more religious stuff. So, if there's anybody got any questions, please feel free. Okay. No. Have you got a Hollywood contract? For which book? I don't know which book. Uh, this has been optioned by Mandalay Films. Uh, the producer, I'm delighted to say, is a woman named Kathy Schulman who got an Oscar for producing Crash. So that's a treat. Um, a director, writer has been assigned to it and he's working on it now. His name is George Ratliff did a documentary called Hell House, which is an interesting film about um, a group in Texas that every year constructs a Hell House. And when you go into Hell House, you see people committing sins. And then when you go into the next room, you see how they are punished for their sins in Hell. And when you leave, you are invited to join their local Baptist church so that you can be saved from those sins. This has been very successful. They have had thousands upon thousands of visitors and it is now being franchised. Can you opt to take part in the sins instead? Um, yeah, obviously you can, but you know, essentially you're on your own. As one, well, not necessarily on your own, but I mean, you have to find your own group. Who would you like to play Carl? Who would I like to play Carl? Um, I'll tell you who they want to play Carl, which is um, uh, Woody Harrelson. Um, and it doesn't seem right to me, but I don't argue with them. Um, I, I think he's too edgy. Yeah? Uh, just a comment. First, as a former fundamentalist Baptist minister, Hell House is in Canada, too. There's a church in Stoneville that does it. Okay, there you and go. I, and I've actually been through it. Okay. And how was it? Uh, pretty freaky, uh, but I was involved with it then, so it was okay. So, okay. <laughs> um, but what, what, I, I'd be interested in hearing what your research process was for, for getting a flavor for the evangelical world, and did you have any particular church as a model for the one you used in salvation? I didn't, I didn't really have a particular church. Um, most writing life, I've actually like taken stuff 
that I know 